Hey guys, welcome to Consume the Goodness. My name is Kendra. I'm a certified lifestyle and weight management coach, and this channel combines healthy lifestyle with God's Word. Before I start today talking about control, I want to tell you two stories that are going to tie into this. The first story or analogy is something that my mom was saying while she's laying there in her bed in the rehab facility she's been looking out the window a lot she watches the birds and she watches there's a tree out there and she was really noticing the branches just moving along with the wind and that we are like the branches like Jesus is the trunk of, you know the sturdy part of the tree and we are the branches that branch off of it and the wind is blowing around and we just kind of have to below with the wind, but we are still there. We're still sturdy attached to Jesus. He's holding us tightly through it all and that the birds land on the twigs and the little branches and that they weigh down, but they don't break. And that, that is kind of like what happens in our lives, that we have things that weigh down on us and that might kind of make us come down a little bit, but the bird fly, you know, but, but we still have that sturdiness. We're still being held so tightly through it. And then going through the different seasons, we have all different seasons that we have no control over. Super windy, bright sunshine days, and then at times where the branches are completely just bare and it's cold. But then another season comes and it's bloomed and beautiful things are growing on the branches. So there's that, that really made me think, oh my gosh, this can totally tie into the video that I'm wanting to do talking about control and, and us trying to hold on to all this control and have so much control over our lives and other people's lives sometimes. And then I also thought about something that my daughter, like a year or two ago, we were watching The Karate Kid and after, or she was like, you know, Mr. Miyagi is kind of like God because you know how he has Daniel doing all these different things like waxing the car and doing the painting, you know, in uh, Karate Kid and Karate Kid 2, doing the painting and cleaning the ground and washing stuff and doing all these different things, doing the nail. And he just, and Daniel is just like super frustrated, annoyed, like, what is the point of this? It's not getting me anywhere. I don't want to do it. But then Mr. Miyagi shows him that there is purpose to this, that I actually do have a reason for doing this and it's for good. And she was saying that, so that is kind of like what God does in our lives, that we do things sometimes, or he leads us to do things, or he has us doing things that we're like, what is the point of this? This is getting me nowhere. It's frustrating. It's stressing me out. I'm just like, irritated and being overworked for nothing and then one day something happens and we're like oh that's why that happened because it's preparing me for this and that was another thing that made me think you know it actually that that analogy could tie into quite a few different lessons but it can still tie into the control thing so those are the two things that I want to say because all this stuff's going to tie together okay so all this stuff is just so something that just stuff that I've been thinking and does this tie into a healthy lifestyle yes of course it does because when we are super trying to hold on to all kinds of control and then stuff doesn't go our way and we're all bent out of shape, that just drives our cortisol levels up, which isn't good. And you know what? I was thinking when I was coaching in Arizona in like 2014, 2015 for a couple years when I was coaching there, before we moved, I used to talk about cortisol levels all the time. Like all the time I would talk about that with clients because they would be like, I have, you know, I'm like gaining weight in this belly area and my upper back area. And that is likely due to high cortisol levels. So high cortisol levels, not good for our health. And if you're trying to lose weight, that really can like slow that process down. But besides that, it is good for our lifestyle. So that's what I'm talking about this stuff. Okay, so I've just been thinking about when we try to control things all the time and other people who try to control things and try to control every little bit of their life. There are plenty of times, maybe not in your life specifically, maybe it's not all the time, maybe it's just sometimes, or maybe it happens and you don't even realize that it's that you're doing it. But trying to control every single situation and then totally freaking out when things don't go your way according to your plan. I'm telling you, freaking out about that stuff is not worth high cortisol levels. Just like, I mean, this ties into so many things, stress and worry and fear and all kinds of stuff, but today we're talking about control. We really don't know what exactly will happen in any given day. We can have an idea, we can have a plan for things, we can have an idea, you know, have like a routine for things. It's good to be organized and prepared, but if slash when things go off track it's okay it is it's okay and you know what there are actually plenty of times that we can look back at those off track moments and see that they were actually necessary for the greatness to fall you know for something great that follows it even if things were to get terrible like the worst that they've ever been 
You are taken care of. Your Father in Heaven knows what He is doing. He knows what He's doing, I promise you. Choose to put your trust in Him and know what it means to experience fearlessness when crap hits the fan in all in any situation what awesome comfort it is having confidence knowing that you are okay no matter what even in death even when you don't have control don't be so bent out of shape when things don't go your way trust that it is for some good reason really try to be mindful and work on letting go of control trying to have so much like such a tight grasp of control on your life it's your life yes and Making good decisions and having plans and being organized, that's totally different from being a control freak where when things don't go your way, your like whole life falls apart. No. The whole day is ruined. It is our lives, yes. And even other people, it happens sometimes with other people's lives, trying to have so much control and being so worked up or irritated or angry or whatever word you want to use when someone else isn't doing things the way you think they should be doing or the way you want them to do it or say it or your way. Stop it! Or just really pushing on people, being just really... There is a line, you know, there's a line between giving someone advice or making suggestions, things like that, and then straight up trying to control what they're doing. Try to think about the things that you do and say and how you react when other people don't do things the way you think they should be doing them. Not just always thinking, well, it's wrong. It's not the way I would, that's not what I would do. That's not how I would do it. That's not what, that's not what I told you to do. There are different ways. Not every way that isn't your way is wrong. It might just be different, not wrong. But still, everything needs to get taken to the Lord. And try keeping in mind that we are not all in the same place in this journey in life. We're not. There are things that you watching have experienced and learned and grown in areas that I haven't even approached yet and vice versa. Just keeping in mind that also helps with the control thing that everybody's in a different place, at least when it comes to controlling, trying to control other people and what they're doing and getting all worked up and judgy when they're not doing it the way that you think they should be doing it or they're not where you think they should be. We're not all in the same place. So I'm going to keep in mind. Ooh, this makes me think. So we need to ask ourselves, good to ask ourselves things, kind of helps keep us in check, keeps us mindful and conscious of what we're doing and saying and our behavior. But asking ourselves, where is the control freak in me coming from? Is it power? Like I need to have all the power? Pride? Fear? Judgment? Just being super judgy, judging everything that everyone does that isn't your way. Good thing to ask yourself. And to stop and, and ask yourself, why do I do this? And then maybe think, uh, okay, I'm gonna try to, every time I start to do this, I'm just gonna stop myself and then give it up to God. Give it up to the Lord. He knows what he's doing with you and with other people, even though it's your life and it's you, you know you better than anybody else. No, God knows you better than you know yourself. And he knows what he's doing. So we should just trust him. We should trust him with our lives and let him take the control that he has. He knows everything that's happening. He knows the stuff before it even happens. So what are you afraid of? Why don't you want to let go of the control? Why don't you want to loosen up your grip on having so much control over things? He knows better how to drive your life than you do and where to drive you and where to go and how to get there and what turns to take and everything else. He knows better than you know. How much sense does it really make when we stop to think about it? How much sense does it really make for us to try to take complete control over our own lives when there's someone else who can do it much better and will do it much better than we ever possibly could? Somebody who has his most perfect will. Why would we not give everything up to him? You know what I mean? That would be like me being in an airplane and trying to tell the pilot what buttons he needs to be pushing and how to do it. I don't know what the heck that is. The pilot knows better how to control the airplane than I do as a passenger. It's the same thing with God. He knows what he's doing. I'm just a passenger. He is the driver. Let him drive. Even when you're in the driver's seat, still let him drive. Let him be the GPS telling you where to go, where to turn, when to stop, when to open your mouth, when to shut your mouth when to move, when to be still. Things will happen, you guys. Bad, crazy, frustrating, stressful, unexpected things out of our control are going to happen in this life. It is going to happen. Running over a nail, going into labor, a death in the family, spilled a drink all over your laptop. 
being in a car accident, traffic jam, and then you're late for work, unexpected things that are completely out of our control are going to happen. We just need to trust God and go with the flow, just like the branches move with the wind, and it will always be worth it. God knows what he's doing, and we always have a reward at the end. And I don't mean a reward like, oh my gosh, I went through all this crap, and now, I won the lottery and I have a billion dollars. The reward could be something that you've learned. It could be growth. It could be wisdom, stronger discernment, a relationship. It could be any kind of reward. But when we keep going the course, when we keep moving forward and we keep going and we keep our trust and our faith in the one who has control and let him have control, we will be rewarded. Just like the Mr. Miyagi analogy that my daughter came up with. We go through some crap and it pays off. It always does with God as a child of God. And letting him have control is as simple as, I mean, keep in touch with him. Reach out to him. Ask him for help. If you struggle with trying to have control over everything, then talk to Jesus and ask him to help you let go of that control because that's he's with us. He is with us always. He's always with us through every single thing, through all of our struggles, and to help us through all of our struggles, including giving him control of our lives. And sometimes... It's not easy to do and sometimes it's hard to really discern is this what i should be doing is this not what i should be doing and again take it to him he will help you actually something happened this morning something really cool happened like a week ago and last night i was wondering hey, should i add that to the video should i like you know add that extra time onto the video that i'm going to be doing or should i not and i just prayed on it. i'm just trusting you you know to just guide me if that's something that should be in that video then let me know basically and he did the verse of the day that i got i get air one that radio the radio station i get a verse of the day emailed to me every morning and when i woke up this morning uh this was the bible verse that i got and i said oh thank you now i know i will add that to the thing so i'll tell you the little story so a little background thing was that on this morning the morning that this happened it was just a rough morning in our house I'll just say things were rough. I won't go into the whole thing because I'm not trying to make this forever. Emotions were all over the place and I was in the kitchen and I was cooking some riced cauliflower and I was just praying. My heart kind of had some sadness and felt heavy and I was just praying for Jesus to hold the people in the house and just grab hold of their thoughts and their emotions and their words and the whole situation and just really be loud <laughs> in in each of us. and. So I was just cooking and praying, praying and cooking. And then I lifted up the lid to what I was cooking and it was like instant what I read was the word joy written in steam. <laughs> and I was just like, wow, this is amazing. And I, it stayed there. I put the lid back down, I lifted it back up. I put the lid back down and then I was like trying to take pictures. It was really hard to capture it with my camera because I have the light, you know, in the kitchen. And the, so there was a glare. It was really really hard to capture even in the, what I'm gonna show you the picture and video of it you can see it but it was even more clear in real life but I was still able to capture it with my phone so I took pictures of it and then I like recorded my <laughs> lifting up the lid to see if you can see it that way and after I was able to kind of capture it good enough to for it to be seen it was gone it went away and the, the whole lid filled with you know it was just looked like the rest of it just steam I couldn't see the word joy anymore and I was thinking oh my gosh I wonder if you know is it possible that the reason why it stayed there long enough for me to take all those pictures and record it and everything to try to get it was because God wanted me to share that you know this is a really cool thing and to me it was just really it was so cool it was such a cool way for him to answer a prayer actually because I was praying that these certain emotions with the sadness and the upset emotions in people in the house would be taken out and replaced with peace and just all kinds of things that we can that we get just from him and then joy is the word that came and I instantly felt joy <laughs> that's for sure I went upstairs and I shared it with the rest of the family and then it's like the whole atmosphere in the house was just lighter and it was better and that whole day was awesome which is great because it seems like what another example of you know what satan meant for evil bad moods and just you know all the stuff that was going on in the house that morning to basically ruin the rest of the day and god said nope i'm gonna turn this into a really cool story and the rest of your day is gonna rock so here you go it was so cool
just keep giving the control to Jesus. Give the control to God. He knows what he's doing. He knows better than we do. And if we keep asking him for direction and guidance, keep asking him to lead us and give him the control, he will do it. I'm telling you, he will. He speaks to us through his word. He'll tell you where you need to go and when you need to go, when you need to be still and when you need to move and when you need to speak and when you need to keep your mouth shut and give you a discernment when something is a good idea and when something isn't, when you should move forward, even if it makes you uncomfortable. I've been giving up control a lot more recently. I've done it, but I'm doing it in a better way, it seems. And I think that's because I have grown. I've grown as a Christian since, you know, years ago, obviously, which I'm so happy for that. I'm happy for the things that I've experienced because they help with these things. But there are things that I don't really want to do or that I think, eh, it couldn't be that bad, you know, for me to stay in this area, for me to stay on that platform or for me to do this or not do that. And I pray and I ask for, I'm just constantly asking for direction, for discernment, for confirmation. And I get it. He's so faithful to to lead us and to be with us and to let us know when what we're doing is right and when it's wrong. Whether we, we want to have the control and say, no, oh, that's fine. I, you know, I know that I, I can whatever. Let go of the control. He knows what he's doing. Even when it's something that you, maybe it makes you uncomfortable or that you don't think is a very big deal if you just keep doing it your way or if you really don't want to do something like, no, I, I really don't want to not be there around those people anymore. I don't want to move away. I don't want to whatever. But God is making it so clear that this is what he wants you to do. Do it. It will be worth it. You might not know what, why it will be worth it right in that moment or even like the next week. It might even be two years down the road before you're like, oh my gosh, this is why God was really leading you to do this or not do that. I am encouraging you guys to just give up the control. And I pray that for myself every day his way, his timing, and to just be using me as a tool. That is a prayer that I pray all the time. And I know I've said that to you guys before, but to just every day be, be praying and letting him know, I trust you. I give everything up to you. My, my house, my finances, my business, my health, my children, my family, my friends, my everything. The little things even, the things, you know, my vehicle, I give up to you. The potholes in the road, every little thing. The tires on my car, I give it all to you and just take control of my life. I, I do not want things my way or in my timing. I want them your way and your timing and just use me. Work things and set things up and line things up, Father, in a way that glorifies you. Use me as a tool to glorify you. And he is faithful to answer those prayers. I'm telling you, I know from experience, it's great. This was a little bit longer than I actually thought it was gonna be because it was just kind of like me thinking about control and then I just kept talking, talking, talking and... <laughs> I appreciate you guys who take the time to stick around through these whole entire videos because some of them are kind of short and some of them are not as short. So I appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch it. It is never taken for granted. I appreciate you guys so much. Please don't forget to check out all the links in the description. There's just so much greatness down there and I try to add details like days and times that certain things are happening. A lot of really good stuff down there. Hopefully you guys go to these things and hopefully they help get you, just help build your relationship with Jesus and help be ways for you to stay in God's word and grow as a person and as a Christian and all these different kinds of things. It's just really good stuff down there. Thank you guys again for watching. I love you guys so much. I really do and I appreciate you all. And please share these videos if you don't feel like liking it or subscribing that those are not the most important things to me the biggest thing is to share and not for me but for God's glory and for you guys to just hopefully help and encourage you guys so thank you guys again God bless and hope to have you back for the next one